KZ fam, I'm back with another video, and today, man, we're gonna be checking out how strong is Gilgamesh. Fate, Gilgamesh, true power explained. Um, shout out to the person that suggested this down in the comments of last video. Thank you guys so much for watching the channel. I appreciate y'all so damn much. And the channel's been growing, man. The channel's been growing fast, and it's all thanks to you guys. Y'all know that nothing is possible without y'all. So, if you're new to the channel, you're into the content, make sure to hit that sub button, hit those likes, and turn on notify bells. So you get notified whenever I drop a video. I'm only going to be dropping this one video right here because it's already late. I need to go lie. It's already late. But yeah, man. Let's just Imagine go. a world let's where go. Gilgamesh actually decided to go all out in a fight for once. Uh, setting aside his arrogance and facing... Has he not gone all out in a fight before? Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. ...his opponent with every weapon in his arsenal and every ability at his disposal. Now, that would definitely be something worth seeing. Yeah. However, in the anime, we never... Now, I know this video right here, this specific video has been made... It, 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 it's been out for four years already, so... Obviously, y'all comment down below if he's actually gone all out or... You know what I'm saying? If anything's changed. I don't quite see Gilgamesh's full potential since he's always operating under the assumption that he's the most powerful being around. And in the 4th uh... and 5th Holy Grail War, that statement actually bears some truth. Ooh. But because of his egotistical personality, he often finds himself in rather tough positions simply because he decides not to try. So let's take a look at how strong Gilgamesh really is, by not actually answering the question directly, but instead by looking at what exactly generates his power, including everything from his noble phantasms and abilities, to all the notable weapons that he has stored in his gate of Babylon. That's and trust me, crazy. there's a lot. Let's just jump right into the good stuff, starting with the noble phantasm that classifies this servant as an archer, even though we've yeah. really never seen him use a bow in his life. The true name oh, of this literal portal to a seemingly infinite number of A-plus ranked weapons is Gate of Babylon, the King's Treasure. Which is an interesting name considering that Gilgamesh wasn't even ruler of Uruk when the area had become known as Babylonia. But since the Golden Capital was often a name used to refer to Gilgamesh's treasury, as well as a common reference to Babylon itself, Gate of Babylon became a very fitting name. Now, as Damn. I'm sure you already know, this noble phantasm grants access to all the valuable items that Gilgamesh had collected during his time as king. It does so by opening what's known as Damn. a divine gate that connects the space of reality to the treasury. This portal acts as an invisible door that allows the treasures and weapons within the vault to easily pass through on just a whim. They can that's be summoned sick. directly into his hands, though that's rarely the case since he instead would rather use them as projectiles and fire multiple at a time through the air like an omnidirectional Gatlin gun that shoots yeah. different sized bullets with unique qualities every single time. That makes Thus sense. classifying him as not only an archer, but an archer with the strongest arrows. Yeah. The true extent of this ability is determined simply by how serious Gilgamesh considers the fight. He judges the Damn. amount of weapons he needs by the severity of the situation. Most often, the gate he uses is very small, firing few weapons at a time, sort of just as a playful usage of the ability. But when up against a strong Damn. opponent like Heracles, the gate becomes wider and he can fight with up to hundreds or even thousands of weapons <laughs> at a time. The weapons can then be returned to the vault at any time, and even reused instantly should he choose to. But Damn. the sheer number of weapons within the treasury are set to allow- Instantly? That's crazy. Um, ...to fight more than enough battles without having to use the same weapon twice. Now, last video, I don't think that I was over-exaggerating when I said that these weapons were launched at a speed of Mach 10. I mean, that's only 12,348 kilometers per hour, which Bruh. should probably generate enough force to parry an attack from a jacked up demigod with 11 lives. But being able to block one of these weapons is only half the battle. Since each uh -huh. one is different and often a noble phantasm in itself, they likely have Whoa. unique abilities apart from the massive explosions that they generate on impact. So if you Damn. didn't want to get messed up by some random side effect of a weapon he just threw at you for shits, then it'd be in your best interest to just dodge them instead. Dodging, however, is yeah. also very unlikely, since portals to the vault can be freely deployed pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Although he likes to launch them from behind his back like a total G, he can just as easily completely surround his opponent with portals and create an inescapable omnidirectional barrage of death. That's crazy. It's also said that if he really wanted to play with his opponent, he would just spawn a random weapon into his hand and attempt some good old hand-to-hand -hand combat. So long nah, as he thought bro. he was the better swordsman, at least. Nah. Though, it's likely that quite a few servants would actually be able to take him on in hand-to-hand -hand combat, since 
Gilgamesh is more of a jack-of-all-trades master of none type, and every other lancer, saber, or archer servants are ones who have mastered a single weapon to its utmost limits. But more on his combat ability later. Let's talk about what's actually inside the vault. In order to gain access to the vault, you first need the key. The key is called the Key of King's Law, Bab Elu. It's a creation from Gilgamesh's time as ruler, intended for the sole purpose of unlocking the gates deep within his golden capital. Its shape is constantly changing, and it can only be handled by Gilgamesh himself. Though Gilgamesh just discarded the key because he sees no use for having it around, and knows no one is foolish enough to attempt to steal from him. As oh, for the shit. contents of the vault, he's stated to have collected all the treasures to have ever existed in the world during his lifetime, Damn. lacking absolutely nothing. I mean, it's not hyperbole when he says he collected all the treasures of the earth. Apparently, the number of treasures within continue to increase even to this day at such a rate that even Gilgamesh doesn't fully know how much is within it. It has weapons, technologies, books, and even games. As an example of how it continues to expand, since the technology he had collected from his era served as a basis for modern technology, things like airplanes and submarines also exist within the vault. Huh. But here's where things get interesting. Gilgamesh was the first hero. His collection of treasures which included weapons and books and technology served as the origin of human wisdom. The only things that could be missing from the vault are items that are produced by entities not of the human race or of extraterrestrial origin. So since this is the case, that, that means that all other weapons that serve as noble phantasms to other servants were derived from Gilgamesh's collection and therefore exist within his vault. Whoa. They're not known as their named versions though. They're actually nameless and referred to as the original prototypes. So Gilgamesh, That's in fact, contains the prototype for every noble phantasm to ever be created by humans since Ooh. they were originally derived from his initial treasures. Of course, noble phantasms like Heracles' god hand, which was derived from Heracles' own legend, is one that Gilgamesh can't obtain. Then, the existence of a weapon in the vault, like Karna's Vasavi Shakti, is completely unknown to Gil since it was never actually used in Karna's legend. If there's no description of the weapon's use, then Gil really only has the name to go by and can't successfully match it to any other spear in the vault. But the reason that Gil's treasure came to serve as the origin for all others was because after he had died, through ways unknown to myself, the treasures within the vault were somehow dispersed all over the world. They were either stolen or handed down, and since they were treated as such valuable weapons, they eventually became established as noble phantasms through various heroic legends, which, fun fact, also derived from Gil's legend itself. Now, the quality of Gilgamesh's Dude. prototypes could be said to make even the more popular named versions look like fakes, due to how high quality okay. their original state was. It's mentioned that yeah. if a newer version was to ever go up against its original version, the newer version would always lose. Meaning that Gilgamesh's yeah. prototypes are the strongest iteration of every noble phantasm derived from the vault. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that if he was to fight against Gay Bolg with his unnamed version of it, that he would just automatically win the fight. It just means that Gil's prototype is a stronger version. Mm -hmm. So, if Gilgamesh was to actually take a fight seriously, he could just sift through the weapons in his vault to find just the right ones that would directly counter his opponent. But That's... since he's just an arrogant piece of shit, yeah. he'll instead just throw whatever and only bring out trump cards like Aya or the Chains of Heaven in really dire situations. Wow, For the bro. sake of knowing though, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the known weapons within the vault anyway. There's Fergus's Kaladbolg, the Rainbow Sword, Roland's Durandal, the Peerless Sword, Ku Cullen's Gay Bolg, Fafnir's Demonic Dynschliff Sword, Ooh. Sigurd's Gram, Perseus's Immortal Slaying Scythe Harp, the Chinese Halberd Hotengeki, Indra's Vajra, and then a whole bunch of other unnamed axes, sickles, spears, swords, armors, Bro. incenses, vehicles, and even the cooking items and though. food. A few notable non-weapon-like items stored inside are a collection of command spells, the Holy Grail itself, though that has long since vanished from within the vault, and even this crazy jet-shaped noble phantasm called Vimana, Throne of the Heaven Soaring <laughs> yeah. King. This is one of the more interesting vehicles what? in his possession. I mean, sure he has the Ship of Light which allows him to travel faster than the speed of light, but Bruh. Vimana lets him travel at the speed of thought, and it looks pretty fucking cool. The it uses solar crystal- The speed of thought? Nah, bro. Nah. ...along with quartz and mercury as fuel to bypass the laws of physics and travel at impossible speeds. 
It's a ship immortalized through two Indian epic sagas which recounted a golden and emerald arc loaded with various guns and ancient nuclear warheads, as well as equipped with optical camouflage, communication interception devices, laser beams, and even bioweapons. What? <laughs> no disrespect to the creators of this legend, but it's almost like a five-year-old came up with a design for this and filled it with every cool feature that they could imagine at the time. <laughs> Literally. Anyway, then he has the Potion of Youth from his legend, which, as you already know, returns the user back to their younger self. Apparently, it returns Whoa. you to the form of a child, and that in itself Whoa. not only alters his appearance, but also his personality. Although the memories from his older self remains, his younger self can't really comprehend the older's actions, and there forms this disconnect between the two of them. Uh -huh. It's assumed that this potion was used to allow himself to blend in during the 10 years of off time after the Fourth Holy Grail War. Though, if the time ever came for him to suddenly have to fight at full strength, he could forcibly reverse the effects. That being said, what? Gilgamesh does have a couple of go-to weapons, and they are Ea and Enkidu. Enkidu Chains of Heaven, being named after his best friend and all, yeah, is classified is. as his most trusted noble phantasm. Bruh. It's a weapon crafted by the gods with the purpose of binding the gods, making it one of the few anti-divine weapons that grows stronger with the more divinity that an opponent has. But That's that insane. can also act as a double-edged sword since an opponent like Saber who has no divinity whatsoever would just be up against regular chains that could be broken out of with just a little bit of effort. Though there is also a limit to the buff that it gets against those of divine origin, since Heracles was able to move around quite a lot after getting completely binded by the chains, mm -hmm. and he himself is half god. Though it is technically just one long chain, multiple sections of it can be summoned at a time, allowing for binding around various parts of the body. He goes for complete immobility when he wants to bind his opponent, and can attempt it a seemingly infinite number of times since there never seems to be a limit to its length when he uses them. Bro. It can also bind the very space it takes up, nullifying all magic in the area. Then there's his Sword of Rupture, Aya, the most <laughs> powerful noble phantasm within Gilgamesh's treasury and the so-called pinnacle of noble phantasms, oh. a sword that's unique to Gilgamesh's existence and never passed down for future legends. Though calling it a sword isn't technically correct, since it was an item that existed before the concept of a sword was even invented. It's designed with a cylindrical drill-like pillar split into three rotating segments that run- First of all, the, the, bro, it looks so cool. I need to go lie, but that shit looks fine. It's designed with a cylindrical drill-like pillar split into three rotating segments that represent the heavens, the earth, and the underworld, which when combined Damn. together, form a representation of the universe itself. Ea was simply insane. a name that Gilgamesh chose for it, most likely as tribute to the Mesopotamian gods of earth and water. In actuality, it's a nameless creation of a god from long before humanity's existence, which then crystallized into form at the beginning of the world. A one-of-a-kind divine construct that even Shiro's unlimited blade works can't duplicate. A sword that knew the world before Genesis, making it the first memory of life that can only be shown when someone gazes upon it. The true formation of the world as it happened and as it was witnessed by this divine weapon. But what exactly does this noble phantasm Bro. do? The inability attributed to it that Gilgamesh needs to call by name in order to activate it. Enuma Elish, the star of creation that split heaven and earth. The resulting winds create a spatial severance. These aren't just your normal winds, compressed and intertwined stratifications that turn into gaps between space and time, undefendable attack that tends to destroy everything in its path. There are various levels at which this attack can be activated, reflect how serious Gilgamesh is taking the fight. Even the most held back versions are enough to completely surpass an attack from Saber's Excalibur. We have this primordial sword that creates winds that tear the very fabric of space. A void of nothingness will open up, whether it's the ground of the earth or the very sky above, but the void will begin to swallow up its surrounding area, creating a vacuum as it attempts to reenact Genesis. Oh, the voids are said to show the truth of and reveal the mystery of creation itself. Whoa. But yeah, you can see how the type of attack that this noble phantasm produces could easily destroy the world, hell, it could even destroy the world itself if Gilgamesh really wanted it to. Those are his main noble phantasms. As for his other skills, they're still beneficial to Gilgamesh's build, per se. He's got the highest rank of the skill Golden Rule. Mm. Measures how likely he is to gain wealth during his lifetime. He will what? never be in a negative financial situation. It played a great role in helping him add every single treasure in the world That's to crazy. his vault. <laughs> Charisma skill. That allows him to command an army and build an empire with great confidence. 
He also has divinity, though this rank is right. actually decreased due to his disdain towards the gods during his lifetime, especially the ones that killed Enkidu. The independent action, which gives him a lot of self-sustainability, clairvoyance, in the form of the noble phantasm, the omniscient, omnipotent star. This is Gilgamesh's mentality into a continuously active noble phantasm who determines servants' true names and power levels at pretty much a glance through magic <laughs> and even quickly determine the most optimal move in any situation because he can also yeah. see the outcomes of a situation through parallel worlds. Wow. So overall, Gil is just a walking powerhouse. His collection of noble phantasms make walking W, bro. Nah, he could see nah, he could see the outcomes. That is, that is actually so fire. That bro. allows almost impossible for anyone to counter him, as he could just quickly assess the situation, but the thing is, he just doesn't. He, if ever, gets serious in a fight. That is most often bro, the root what? cause of his defeat, guard Aya against anyone that he deems unworthy, which is pretty much everyone. So his potential to be the strongest servant is definitely up there, since you first have to fight like a champion to be the champion. So basically, this man could defeat anyone, bro. Like... That's what happens when you're cocky, bro. You get shit on. Nah, bro. Gilgamesh is, is truly, like, strong as hell, though. That is insane, bro. Anyways, y'all, that was how strong is Gilgamesh. His abilities explained, you know what I'm saying? What his true power is. And, bro, I learned a lot about Gilgamesh now. You know what I'm saying? I knew he, 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 could, um, he could summon weapons at will. But I didn't know much about like the abilities and everything that he could do. This is crazy, bro. Anyways, KZ fam, stay positive, stay healthy, and most definitely keep that strong mentality, man. I'm out. Yeah, we got